Good morning, everybody. How are we all? Excellent. Um, I'd like to gauge uh, a little bit about the level of knowledge in the room about local development. Um, how many of you run Docker? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And um, how many have run Vagrant? Many more. Interesting. How many currently run a native local development environment, so something like MAMP or Dev Desktop or something like that? Okay, pretty much everyone. Cool. So, um, this session is really kind of, um, it is what it is on the label. <laughs> it's uh, top eight considerations for choosing a local development environment, and it's, it's really targeted at a team lead uh, who wants to um, consider what, they, what their whole team should be using. Um, it was spawned out of a whole uh, kind of set of research that uh, one of our uh, really excellent developers did called Aurelian. Uh, he was checking out um, a new local development environment for, for Acquia. I'm, I work at Acquia. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm John Kennedy. I work at Acquia. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we went through this whole uh, kind of process of researching um, a new local development environment uh, that we're thinking of moving to from Dev Desktop. We're, n we're not decided yet. There was a lot of research done. Um, I also had help from Adam Balsam, who uh, is the tech lead for Lightning and kind of gave lots of comments on um, his considerations. Um, and uh, I also got help from some blog posts recently that were really quite inaccurate. <laughs> and I, I kind of went to them, I was looking through what people had posted recently about um, how local development environments work, how various architectures work, and it was kind of uh, obvious that people still had a lot of misconceptions about different architectures. Um, I'm happy for you to ask questions all the way through, but beware, this is not a demo. <laughs> I'm not going to show these environments. This is, this is really about the process of working out what questions uh, should I ask if I'm thinking of standardizing my whole team on a local development environment. So in case you have to go or you get bored or you're really up for a demo, uh, some of the, the cool parts of this presentation, uh, try out Lando and BLT, they're awesome. Uh, Windows 10 Pro, or not at all, if you're on, on below that, uh, it's very sad if you're trying to do local development with anything but native. Um, it's still easier to use an installed native stack, but easier is a completely loaded word, and we'll explore that later. Um, and team leads need composability, and this is the big one, and I'll talk a bit about this later. Um, so. <laughs> So if you have to go halfway through, you know, that's at least half the value. <laughs> so this is what we're going to go through. Uh, we're going to talk about architectures. We're going to talk about command, um, command line tools and, and support for them. Um, composability of environments and configurability of tests. Uh, support for other languages. This does not mean French and German, although I should have probably done some research into that. Um, it's actually just about things like Node and you know, Ruby and that, that kind of thing. Um, tool sets uh, versus application. Um, and uh, open sourciness, why is it important? Um, implications of the popularity of, of a particular piece of software, options for commercial support, and uh, current solutions and approaches. So, um, I'm hoping I've skipped all my research slides in my presentation. We'll see if something weird comes up, but we should be good. Uh, architectures. So, um, you'll notice I've got Docker and Docker Plus. This is the first little um, oddity, which uh, I can define these pretty clearly, though. Um, Docker itself, uh, excellent tool, lots of configuration, uh, no assumptions about um, about a particular application, run what you want. And actually, Docker for Drupal, great project, but really just gives you um, a configuration for Docker. So it gives you the, the Docker Compose file, which is good. Um, it gets you a long way. But that's its main goal, is to say, hey, you want to do Docker with Drupal? Well, here's a really great starting point. Whereas something like Lando or DDEV, and I haven't, haven't um, installed DDEV, or DRUD, I think it's called, but I've looked at its documentation pretty extensively. It looks a lot like Lando and its approach. It puts this whole layer around Docker, where you've got a command line tool um, and a lot of configurability and kind of assumptions about using particular applications so that you can write very short uh, or compose very short configurations that can be then shared with the team, which is really important. Native stacks, um, everyone's used native stack here apparently, so that's great. <laughs> um, but you know, it installs onto your machine as a stack all together. So MAMP installs PHP, MySQL, MemCache, whatever, all all you know in one little folder for you, and um, doesn't actually quite give you um, complete. 
uh, encapsulation, um, but it, it tries to. Similar for Dev Desktop. Um, whereas native DIY, which um, which should actually be DIY, I don't know why it's <laughs> DIY, um, is actually installing all these uh, little applications uh, yourself. So on a Mac, that's probably using something like Brew. If you're on a Mac and trying to do this without Brew, then use Brew. Um, Linux, you know, whatever your package manager is, and Windows with a whole lot of pain. Um, VMs, Drupal VM is an excellent solution. Runs on top of uh, Vagrant. You can just run VirtualBox and run your own machines, but if you were going to do that, you may as well use VirtualBox box plus Vagrant. Vagrant is an excellent solution. Um, but in that whole stack, if you were going to do that, I would say go with Drupal VM because it is a very Drupal specific solution. Um, but, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but, um, you know, the big difference um, there is about um, VMs really create a whole machine. In fact, I have a slide on this, so I'll, I'll wait till then. So here we go. So the difference between Docker and uh, you know VMs, if you haven't kind of researched a whole bunch of this online, wow, what is going on there? Anyway, um, it'll be better on the recording, so you can look at the recording later. <laughs> um, the, the difference is that uh, containers are light on stock. Basically, if you're on Mac or Windows, you've got uh, one VM, which if you're, if you're on Windows 10 or pretty much any version of Mac OS now, you're using a native Docker installation that creates a VM and then creates containers on top of that. So it's really quite efficient. Um, in olden days, and I'll discuss some of the misconceptions about Docker a little bit later, um, you were basically running a kind of virtual box so that you could get your Docker and that had its own issues. Um, but the world got a lot better. When you're running a VM, you're running one heavy, big chunk of VM. Um, so you start running a few of them, and it starts to really weigh down on your um, memory, um, and actually even your, your disk space. I, um, I was finding that you know running a few um, projects concurrently was really weighing down my disk space uh, when I did that. Um, important to mention, um, and, and I was going to do it when I uh, <laughs> was explaining this is not a demo, I, uh, I did have done a some local development, but a hell of a lot of uh, use of local environments. I was head of solutions architecture in Europe, Middle East, and Africa for or EMEA, as uh, as the company would call it, for uh, for 18 months. Um, and during that time, I had to have you know 20 installations concurrently on my machine. And at the time, I was running um, Dev Desktop, and really at that at that time, native stacks were the thing. Um, that was. Uh, that there was uh, really big issues trying to use anything else. Since then, the world has completely changed. Um, and that was only two years ago. Um, so these are some, this is some kind of things that I hear from a lot of people, that their perception of Docker, although you can't read it, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll talk it out anyway. Um, where did that water go? Thank you. So it used to be difficult to get into Docker to run something. Um, not the case anymore. Docker itself has made it pretty easy, but then if you use something like Lando or DDEV, it's really easy. Um, and they've given you configuration options around plenty of CLI tools, and they've also uh, made it you know, as simple as typing Lando command within the folder that's actually running uh, your environment on your machine. Um, so running a CLI tools uh, fairly easy. Getting into the machine itself is fairly easy if you want to log into it. Um, running builds, um, I'd say that the Docker solutions are opinionated, so you probably have to use the tools they suggest, but it's great, runs well, uh, you can run tests really well. File system performance, this used to be a major one. Um, people always complained about keeping uh, files synchronized between your Docker instance or your VM and uh, your local machine. And VMs got better at this early, so VMs, VMs Vagrant came along and um, was synchronizing your files really well. Um, and eventually Docker solved that problem as well. And that wasn't too long ago. Um, and that's, I think, some of the reason for the misconception um, about uh, Docker and like recent blog posts that were a little bit inaccurate. They haven't actually seen the latest Docker. Latest is, is in the last six months um, because that problem's really been solved. I've also ha heard developers having file system permissions issues, but I haven't seen it. One of the reasons that um, file system performance is so important 
is if you're developing Drupal 8, and by the way, how many people still majority developing Drupal 7? Okay, right, developing Drupal 8, uh, learning Drupal for the first time. Hey, congratulations, yay, come to our camp. <laughs> um, so, uh, the really important thing with Drupal 8 is that um, there's a lot more, th there's many more methods you're going to need to know, and an IDE um, is just invaluable. So, auto-complete in your IDE, it makes it so much easier to do object-oriented programming in Drupal 8. In Drupal 7, you didn't, it wasn't as vital, it was, uh, you know, as long as you had uh, Vim up and running, that was fine, um, but, uh, you know, even my most advanced coders now are telling me that um, an IDE for Drupal 8 just makes them so much faster. Um, there's probably some kind of, you know, mega genius Alex Pot type people who can just remember everything, um, but IDEs are great, and so having access to the <coughs> files locally, or your code base locally, is really important. But also a solved issue for Docker. Um, so there was this thing uh, with Windows called, uh, what's it called? V something. Now I'm, now I'm forgetting. Um, Hyper-V. Hyper-V, that's it. Um, that came about with uh, Windows 10, and uh, they didn't even let you have it with Windows uh, 10 Home. You have to have Windows 10 Pro. It does virtualization a lot better uh, than anything else, and so um, my general recommendation here is that you probably move to a virtualized solution because they've come a long way and, um, and you know, now you've got much better encapsulation and composability. So uh, considering you, you should be going to a virtualized solution, then you should be up on Windows 10 because that's, if you're on Windows, um, that's, it's a much better system for doing it. Docker Toolbox, which is what you have to use if you're um, below that, is legacy and they say it on the site. And like all the issues like file system synchronization and performance and those things, they won't necessarily ever be fixed with Docker Toolbox. Um, some of them might be, but you know, from what I've seen, it's all the, the Docker native applications are far and above better. Of course, I'm on a Mac. How many people are running Windows here? Yeah, a couple. Um, I have a slide on that. <laughs> so funnily enough, I think it was like three days ago on Slashdot, finally, finally Windows 10 surpassed Windows 7. Isn't that crazy, right? It's like there's this ton, ton of people um, running Windows 7 still, and okay, maybe it's not crazy, because down down a little lower, we can actually see people running Windows XP. Isn't that scary? <laughs> right? Like, nuclear destroyers probably. Um, but, uh, but John, all, of course all programmers wouldn't be running antiquated operating systems. No, that's actually incorrect, because when we went out and did a survey, survey of our clients, like the big ones, we found they had plenty of offshore development teams who were still using Windows 7. No! <laughs> this actually cut off a lot of options for us. Um, we had to consider how we might support a Docker toolbox um, within an existing solution. It's still a sticking point we're thinking about. Um, maybe everyone can just switch over or maybe we just drop those clients, I don't know. <laughs> CLI tools. Um, this is a little off topic, but I thought it would be a fun exploration. Uh, or it would be if we could see it. Um, <laughs> but basically up there, uh, very small note, uh, that icon up the top left is Drush, um, if you haven't seen the Drush uh, uh, logo. Um, also interestingly, um, Drush is now built on Symfony um, CLI with, for, in Drush 9, which brings a ton of the capabilities that you used to only be able to do in Drupal console. Uh, so if you're still, you know, both are great tools, um, I think coming a long time ago from a systems administrator background myself, I always found Drush more comfortable to Drupal console. Drupal console came a long way, but uh, Drush is back at it and really worth a, another try if you're, um, you know, if, if you haven't tried Drush 9, um, doing a lot of things that Drupal console once did. Drupal console is also awesome and, you know, great to have competition. Doesn't do some of the things that, uh, that Drush does though. Um, so on the right, I've got some, uh, some JavaScript tools like Grunt and Gulp and NPM. Um, if anyone's doing front-end development, you know, you probably used, downloaded some of your front-end libraries through NPM. Um, you might need to uh, build through Grunt and Gulp. Um, I've also got a little icon here that <coughs> should look like a sandwich, that one. Um, that's Acquia BLT. Uh, it's one of our internal tools. Uh, I'm not going to sell it too hard, but it is a build, launch, and test tool, and it wraps up a lot of the things like uh, that you know, say Terminus from um, from uh, Pantheon would, uh, like synchronizing to the server, setting up projects, 
um, running builds and tests locally. Um, so, you know, if you've done uh, any test-driven development or behavioral-driven de uh, development, you'll know these PHP unit and um, bhat. Um, uh, bhat's over there. There's Composer. <laughs> um, if you, and anyone using Drupal 8 should be using Composer. Um, I won't kind of go through all the reasons you, you should be doing builds. And there's Fing and Robotask over there. But the, the theme here is that if you are doing uh, Drupal 8 development, and you know, probably Drupal 7 development, but definitely if you're doing Drupal 8 development, there's a ton of um, command line tools that you should be using, which if you haven't used command line in the, ta in the past, um, it's a little bit of a challenge, but you will get a ton of productivity and, uh, and there's a lot to be gained out of starting to use some of these tools. Uh, so, you know, things like entity creation in, in um, Drush 9 on Drupal Console or, um, you know, not committing your library packages to um, your Git repo um, by using Composer is a big deal. Um, and, uh, and running, um, checking out, you know, you might not be running test-driven development, but um, it is very useful to have at least some unit tests on your, on your Drupal projects, and there's a lot better ways now to do it, so if you haven't done it in the past, check it out. It's got a lot better. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the theme here is that you really need to be able to run your command line tools. So if you can't do that with a, a local development solution, that's a real pain. Uh, so there are some native stacks that make that difficult. Um, if you, you're running um, MEMP, it's been a little while for me, um, but I think there are some gotchas around versions of PHP that it's using versus your tools are using, how you've installed your tools, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, also somewhat depending on um, which operating system you're using, but as I said, this is about which questions to ask. And you know, if you're going to decide on a local development tool, uh, a local development environment for your team, make sure you test these tools um, in in your install process against uh, that. So, ease of CLI execution, Docker, really good. Uh, Docker Plus, which is like you know Lando or one of those really excellent because they've even got kind of more configuration so I can configure things about um, I can configure things um, about Drupal console in my uh, YAML file for Lando which um, is great if you have a team um, because you can kind of standardize on things about how you're running tests and how you're how you're using your CLI tools. Native stacks got a little angry face there you probably can't see it very well it's in red in the middle, um, but there is, there is, uh, these, these faces are all the way through this presentation, this is going to be fun. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, I've, I've seen plenty of problems with it. Do you, do you see the whole, I've, I've copied this all the way through the presentation, D-Y-I. That's, that's, I should really, I'm totally dyslexic. Anyway, um, one of my, so Adam Balsam, who runs Lightning, I was talking about before, he still runs uh, this stack, and like, a, a, a native stack that he's installed himself on macOS. So, you know, I think he used Brew and he's installed PHP and he's done all these things. One big difference between him and probably a lot of you or people who are working in agencies, he used to work in an agency, he works on one project, really. He works on Lightning. And Lightning is a meta project, it's not like a site, it's, it's a, you know, it's a template for sites or a starting point for sites. So he's really building software so that, you know, you all can build those sites. So. He, his setup is really geared around that, uh, that one piece of software. Um, and that means that encapsulation is, an, is an important. He's not moving between projects often. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to have a whole bunch of local development environments running locally. Um, so that's pretty good for him. But he'll readily admit if he had to run 20 sites on his machine or he was going project to project to project, um, this could get fairly tiresome. Um, and command of, you know, the, the command line tools and the configurability would, would be as well. VMs, I mean, you know, VMs have basically solved all the problems. Um, they still got performance issues, and as I was saying before, um, they're fairly heavy, um, but you can use the range of CLI tools with them. So the questions you should be asking around environment configuration and testing, how long does it take for a developer to be onboarded? You know, can they, can, uh, can they sit down at their machine and, um, hit a button and have a local development environment on IDE. Um, you know, how long does it take to set up the machine? Uh, you know, what, is there this long list of instructions or this long script that I have to run on their machine? Um, what I found is that um, 
A tool, tools like, uh, like Lando allow you uh, to uh, commit the configuration to uh, GitHub and then really just run like Lando start and you know all of that configuration will be set up locally as opposed to kind of running um, you know a vagrant solution where you might have to run scripts in that VM to get it to, to parity with your cloud. Um, so it's can I match versions of services with the ones running on my production cloud? Um, how do I how do I get the right version of PHP, the right version of MySQL, so that my tests are going to be valid um, when I when I uh, when I run them locally? Um, can I write my configurations of code and commit them to Git and have all team members upload them? The kind of the simple joy of uh, you know of Git pull project, um, Lando start, and having that YAML file sitting there and configuring everything. Um, if you haven't tried it. Uh, Try out, lots of fun. Everyone, standard environment, um, at, least, at least worth a go. Um, that kind of composability, um, you know, is, is fantastic. And you won't be able to see this on this, but basically what I've got on the, the left is Lando and the right is Vagrant. And, um, you know, maybe you can have a look at the recording, but what I'm highlighting here is that the, the Lando YAML file um, brings it up a whole level. It kind of hides all the mess, hides all the underlying configuration that's involved in Drupal and synchronization of files in Docker and all these kinds of things and gives you really, really simple options. Whereas Vagrant and, you know, the, the kind of the piece of the Vagrant file that I pulled here is actually from Drupal VM and it's, uh, it's great, um, is really complicated. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's the, you know, you're watching the sausage being made in the Vagrant file. Um, and if you want to reconfigure things, uh, you can do it, but there's probably a lot of searching through docs. Um, and uh, docs are excellent for, for both, but uh, kind of the, the newer type of configuration, the YAML files, you'll see probably in DDEV as I, have, as I said, I haven't tried it, um, but definitely in Lando, kind of bring you above a lot of that mess and just allow you to think about the application settings. Um, so it's important to ask, do you care about testing? Um, <laughs> some people don't, and that's okay. If you're building little sites and they're not high risk and you're not changing them very often, okay. Um, but you know, as team lead, you probably want your developers running tests, and it's important to ask the question, um, and how valid are my local tests, and can I integrate with a test pipeline? So Being able to run, and I'll, I'll talk about BLT because that's what we use at Acquia, but there are plenty of other um, build tools that you know we'll build locally and then push to a pipeline to do a build. Um, being able to run similarly in your local to your build pipeline to your uh, production environment or at least dev stage test environments um, is really important, and you've got to be able to have kind of compos composability of your environment to do that. If you run a native stack, uh, you're liable to miss this all the time, just because it's maybe a little bit hard to keep, to keep a track of what versions you're using, because it's not in a config file. But also, you may not have the option to install particular versions of things um, if you're on MAMP or something like that. So here we are at the faces again. You can't really see them, um, but for configuration and testing, Docker is pretty good. Docker Plus is incredible. Um, native stack, it makes it very fairly hard, so does DIY uh, native, and, um, and VMs are, are fairly good. That, that, I really wish you could see that guy though. He's just like having a great time. Like he's just ecstatic. Anyway. <laughs> so support for things other than Drupal. Uh, we're doing um, some really interesting work recently. I was actually at um, Morning Music yesterday and they, they, they're doing some great things with Angular in front of Drupal. They're actually using uh, progressively decoupled so they don't run Node yet. Um, they're still kind of using Angular components which load up through a Twig template and then populate through an API call. Um, but they are thinking about, um, should we be thinking about an Angular app applications, you know, full stack JavaScript in front of Drupal, uh, decoupled Drupal. And I think more and more people will think about this. It's a specific use case. It's like I want to build a web application or a progressively, a progressive web application, um, and that might be one experience that I want my user to have. But I still need content from Drupal. These things I think will come up more and more. It's going to be even more important to be able to run um, different languages or different, uh, you know, different um, execution environments on my local, um, and um, basically to get to it. Uh, 
you know, so what protections do I have against dependency conflict, conflicts? Um, how will I update the software? Can I snapshot a state of, of, um, of any of my environments so that I can use them in different places? Can I bring up the other services quickly? Like, do I have to run a whole other VM to uh, simulate my node server, or can I just run it in a really light container? Um, and uh, how easy to install, and how do I config configure the version? So basically, um, Docker has always been brilliant at this, um, and you know any and so consequently anything you know running on top of Docker is also um, excellent at this. You can run all sorts of different um, application execution environments like Node or Ruby or whatever you want, um, and they're fairly light because they all just run on one underlying VM and then have this logical separation between the containers. Um, so if you need to do this, if you need to run, uh, maybe you need to run an elastic search, you know, and you need to run that because you need to test searches for your Drupal environment. That's a simple one. Like that, that's perf That's exactly what Docker was built for. Um, so if you start to get into those kind of more complex situations where you know in your production environment you're running a lot of different uh, applications, Docker is just way, way out in front. Um, MAMP, it's uh, really hard because... The starting point with MAMP, you know, is I just need a LAMP stack, and this is, you know, these are all beyond LAMP. Um, DIY native, DIY native is uh, is fine, but um, you know, you're still you're going to have to install specific things and work out the ports they're running on, and um, and maybe you've got, you know, you've got to then simulate how they're being accessed on your production server. Where if they're in Docker, uh, you can do uh, fairly. Uh, fairly good routing to, to, to kind of simulate the kind of connection they'd be making to another service, whereas, and, and there were performance issues there with Docker, but they've, for the majority part, they've been solved. Um, VMs, usually you've got everything running on one machine, so it's similar to running it on your own machine, except it's slightly easier uh, because, you know, it's a Linux box and most people aren't running. It's interestingly, who's running Linux for development here? Who has, like, their main machine is Linux? One, two, ah, oh, uh, Urban, I see you. Sorry, transition. transitioning into a VM. Okay. Yeah, right. So, um, great if you are, because basically you don't need to come to this if you are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's still good to run uh, Docker containers on Linux. There's still a lot of advantages there, but um, if you're already there, I think the main issue is most people aren't. If you have a development team, they don't really want to be necessarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a question from the audience for the recording. I was just saying it's eleven o'clock. All right. Um, so what's in the box is important, and I'm going to go back on all my all my words now and say, hey, actually, uh, Dev Desktop and MAMP can be fantastic um, for certain people because if you have site builders um, who are not doing code development and they want to synchronize an environment to their local. Uh, then you know these stacks can be really great. Um, Dev Desktop for Acquia, I can just click a button, it'll pull a site from cloud, I can look at content. Yay! Until it fails. Until it fails, maybe. Um, you know, if you've worked out how to do synchronization with, with MAMP, good on you, but the point is here, even in MAMP, I can boot up something fairly quickly and not have to know much code. Um, so, and I'll get to it in a minute. It is somewhat about roles um, or what you're doing. There's not one, you know, um, best solution for everyone. Although I think there's a best solution for most people. That's beside the point. It's about questions, not answers. Um, so this is trying to describe it. <coughs> Basically, um, Docker is doesn't have much out of the box. You know, if you're just installing base Docker, you've really got to know versions of things that you want to install, you've got to go out and build your Docker compose file, and you've got to, maybe you go to, you know, Drupal for Docker and you get their compose file, but you've still got a lot to do. Um, Docker Plus, or something like Lando, doesn't have a UI. So, you know, I mean, Calibox did, but don't use Calibox, use Lando, because Calibox is still suffering from all the performance problems of um, Docker Toolbox and all these sorts of things. Lando's a much better experience for a developer now, but it doesn't have like a pretty, here are your sites and click this button and do this thing. Um, which means that early on, a native stack like Manic or Dev Desktop can be really good. Um, but then late game, like if you're doing development or things heavy, um, then something like, you know, Lando um, 
is great. Um, obviously nothing out of the box if you're doing DIY native and, um, and VMs, I mean Drupal VM does provide a lot. So if you boot up Drupal VM, you've got a map like page, we can see like you've got a web page, we can see your database running and your credentials and you can use tools like um, uh, PHP my admin, stuff like that um, out of the box. So it's pretty good. Um, not not as easy as something like Mampo Dev Desktop, and not as um, not as feature rich in terms of other languages that I can use um, as as Lando, one of those things on top of Docker. So this is this is actually an important question to ask. It's one of the things that Aurelian harps on with me. Um, the open sourciness of it, you know, if we're a development team, we probably have our particular standards that we want to use. So it's important to think about: can I extend it? You know, if I if I put in a pull request to the maintainer, are they likely to accept it? Is that even a thing? Like, I can't, I probably can't do that for something like MAMP and or Dev Desktop. Um, you know, can I contribute? Will it be tied to a cloud vendor? Um, actually, a lot of cloud vendors have started recommending uh, Lando. We don't do it explicitly at Acquia yet, even though BLT will work with it. Um, but you know, there are some others that are tied um, pretty tightly to to cloud vendors like Dev Desktop. <laughs> Um, and will it persist? Yes. So are, are they? Are you planning on uh, fixing uh, BLT so that it's using Lando instead of Vagrant? Um, so interestingly, BLT uses Drupal VM, um, but we're thinking of um, switching it to using Docker containers. Um, so the w thing that we use to do that might be Lando. It might be something else. Uh, you can run Lando with BLT. Um, you just run BLT inside of Lando. Um, but in fact, the Lando guys, Lando guys, um, I think Alec wrote a, a post on it. It's on their site. It's got a little pretty graphic about how you do it and um, install instructions. Um, generally, um, you know, at Acqui, we've got a lot of clients who run Dev Desktop, um, and that's because they've got a lot of site builders um, or people running using content and. Um, <coughs> And that uh, is really good for them. And so to bring a solution out, like the one true solution, we're going to need a pretty UI and good synchronization, a whole lot of things that Dev Desktop does that you know we can't do with BLT yet. BLT is a great solution, but um, it's really about for a really advanced developer. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, so you know, Docker solutions very open source. You know, Docker is the Windows installer of open source. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's brilliant for um, its open sourciness. So is most of the Docker Plus solutions. Um, native stacks like uh, MAMP and Dev Desktop really can't contribute and you know, they, they may not persist because of that. Um, and then uh, native solutions, you know, obviously using PHP itself. So it's hard to contribute to like a configuration tool on the top, but you can actually, you've got access to all the, the, the software directly and then VMs similar. So it's important to measure popularity, but it's hard to measure popularity. Um, can I extend it? Will it persist? So it's not good to look at Twitter or blogs. They're not representative. Um, I also want to say the same about podcasts. Don't listen to podcasts. They've, they've kind of proven themselves wrong a few times. Um, but popularity in itself is really not easy to gauge at the moment. Most people, most developers I've talked to still kind of use GitHub stars, which in itself is this weird weird skewed popularity contest and it doesn't really measure usage very well. Downloads is not that great um, and uh, Drupal.org usage doesn't apply to all solutions. So there's no great way to measure popularity, it's still a very intuitive thing but it's probably important because you want the solution using to persist. You don't want to have to roll to a new local development environment um, you know, every year. <coughs> so it's worth asking the question. Commercialist support. <coughs> One of the vendors we deal with has an offshore team that needs to use an accepted solution, like a, a supported solution. Um, so they've got, you know, there are 200 odd developers um, that are international and they actually need us to rubber stamp something. So this could be a consideration for your team, depending on who you're working with. Like, do you have to work within FedRAMP or do you have to, like, another compliance environment? You know, what kind of contracts are you going for? Does your team need to certify all the software you're using? So this can make a, a kind of a commercial um, agreement uh, really valuable. Um, you know, we've been thinking about it recently, but I know that there's also, you know, uh, people in the Lando team, they, they've got, you know, they, um, 
there's a possibility of working with those teams directly if you need support from them. It might not be like a compliance rubber stamp, but if you need support, uh, then you can talk to them directly. So this is really about roles, um, and I wish this was more clear. <laughs> um, it, it, we're even just cutting off the left, so uh, anyway. Basically, down the left, I've got systems administrator, developer, site builder, and, and developer team lead. And, um, and this is really the crux of it. Um, you know, systems administrators will love Docker and Docker Plus. Um, they'll probably dislike a native stack like MAMP. Um, and they'll feel meh about uh, DIY native. And they'll be happy with VMs. Um, sysadmins aren't doing the development. They're probably not creating content. They're not uh, doing site building, um, but they're in the mix if you're in a large organization. So it's important to understand their perspective, but this probably shouldn't make your decision if you're you know, doing things for a development team. Um, developers themselves uh, seem to prefer things like Lando over Docker because they don't have to think so much about the configuration. Um, there aren't that, you know, there's still lots of people using, uh, lots of developers using um, a native stack, but um, I think once people have, have really tried out a good uh, Dockerized solution or VM <coughs> solution, uh, they tend to stick with it rather than uh, trying to use something like Dev Desktop or MAMP. Um, and <coughs> certainly there are a lot of developers still using uh, native stacks on the machine, so brew install PHP. Um, and as I said before, that's really about Am I doing one project for a time, or am I doing many projects? Because if I'm doing one, then that native stack um, you know, might be fantastic. Um, but what I've seen is that developers using, you know, going from project to project and having to switch and having to boot up a new environment that a whole team is using, um, it makes it much easier um, if, you, if you're uh, not doing uh, DIY native, if you're using a composable solution. Um, it's still pretty good. Where the real uh, changes lies with the, the developer team lead. I'll talk about that in a second. So site builders uh, love things. You can just boot up and have buttons. Um, so it's, it's important to kind of know that, be cognizant if, if you have um, team members who are really just who are doing testing or um, you know maybe a, a director of digital who just wants to see the site up and running, that might be a good argument to have um, you know just you know dev desktop or map running for them. Um, they're not going to want to do all the installation of the other solutions. Um, and the development team lead, this is really where it's at, because this is why we're here. Um, the composability of something like, uh, you know, something like Lando in that kind of Docker Plus category seems to make it uh, the best solution. If you're, a developer, if you're a developer team lead who's trying to standardize for your whole team. This is more about questions than answers, but that's where I got to um, in my research. And that, that folks is the end of the talk. So, thank you. Question. Uh, what, is, what do you think Docker Plus solutions lack for the site builders? I mean, what what could be made for Docker Plus solutions? Um, Generally, a UI. What, what kind of UI? I mean, Mac, so, Mac doesn't provide a lot of UI. I mean, really, you have kind of UI in Mac. Yeah. So my, my site builders who de use Dev Desktop love it because they can click add a new site and they can add a new Drupal site and they get a selection of, oh, I can pick Lightning or Drupal 8 or Drupal 7 or, um, you know, uh, like uh, OpenEDU or any of those other distributions and then it will install it for me and then I have a page. Um, and that that's powerful for a site builder who really doesn't want to think about the code at all or who doesn't want to think about um, CLI at all. Like, this is a... Someone's going to do it because actually the Calibox team did it. Like they had a Docker-based solution with a UI that was pretty good. Um, it just had some performance issues, and Lando will probably do it. I haven't done it yet, but building a UI where I can create a new site—that's a big deal. UI where I can synchronize sites back and forth from my cloud—that's a big deal. Um, a UI where I can potentially access, you know, tools that I was talking about before, like um, PHP My Admin, all those kinds of things. They, they. They become really useful for a user who isn't actually about <coughs> coding a module. Okay. And another question is uh, about <coughs> DLT. What stage should run in DLT tools with the Docker Plus? What's the what? What's 
the issue running DLT? You, you mentioned there is no way to use DLT cloud server containers. You can only use DLT tools inside containers. Oh, okay. So the question is, um, you know, can well question is, can you use um, BLT with a Docker Plus solution? And actually, I think I miscommunicated that because the answer is yes, you can. There's actually documentation on the Lando site to run BLT with Lando, but the way you do it is you boot up Lando and then you run BLT within it. BLT is actually a build test launch solution. BLT, build launch test, <laughs> um, which is a funny order. Um, and it, it, you know, it gives you access to using Drupal VM, but you don't need to use Drupal VM. It's just an option um, that you know you can use conveniently, but you can use all its other capabilities within something like Lando. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a, just okay. as far as uh, actually that, that, that's, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, I have it installed on a uh, Windows Seven Pro. Yeah. And it won't run. Yeah. It used to run. It yeah. Quit. So mm -hmm. I tried to upgrade it. It won't upgrade. So I try to deinstall it and deinstall it. Yeah. Any, is there any way to clean it out? To and I, I try to. Uh, I've seen this question posted up on the forums. Nobody even answers. Uh, is there a, a procedure to rip it out? We've been doing work on um, Dev Desktop to kind of um, fix some of these problems, but. Um, I can't fix it if I can't reinstall it. Yes. So is there like a procedure that I can get in all the registry or whatever else it takes? Something's locking it up, and I don't know what it is. That's a good question. Have you um, submitted a ticket to support, or? I had a long time ago, but I, I, I saw the similar question posted with yeah. no answers for months and months on end. Yeah, I don't have a straight answer to whether there's a good way to uninstall Dev Desktop from Windows 7 when it uh, isn't uninstalling. And it won't, you can't install a new one on top of it either. That also it won't run, it won't install, and it won't uninstall. Maybe you should talk to Mr. Urban up the back. <laughs> okay. He might be able to help you out. All right. And one other question yes. regarding that. Um, do you have any clue what stops the newer versions of the desktop from running a club across the local area network as opposed to the old one which did? Much way, way, I don't remember the version numbers, but I have an old version that will run across the plane. <coughs> and I use it as like almost a. I think three, three probably won't, but two will. Um, yes. And three, three, we tightened up a lot of things. So it's probably about security. Um, and that was it. Is there any way to undo that? No. <laughs> it's a feature. Exactly. I, actually, I think um, first was stuff here. Um, this person here later was really impressive. And I'm kind of curious to ask this very direct question of like, has Aqua established a relationship with this team? Because it's really impressive what they're trying to do. I see them trying to be the central yeah, DevOps from multiple platforms. So the example in Aqua's case is, yes, you need to spin up a Drupal site, but you also need to spin up a Node.js site to do decouple. Correct. And they're offering a solution to do both those things at the same time. So they're, they're positioning themselves very uniquely. And I'm kind of curious, like, what's your personal experience with it? Do they have enough funding to, to I don't know, to <laughs> I think Alec is smart and he's going to do fine. Um, I think, um, you know, so um, my role at Acquia is I'm, uh, I'm director of uh, product. I have a few product managers working for me. One of those product managers is assigned to local development environments, Node.js and pipelines. That person um, is kind of going through the process of working out um, if we have a tighter relationship, I can't comment on you know Aquis in general. Personally, um, I think it's great that Lando is the um, the kind of potential you know development local development solution across all of the the platforms. Um, and you know I love the way that they're kind of taking commits into their code that allow you to do that. I, you know I think that it's really logical for people who um, you know are running different clouds or um, you know. But, so I think I think they're fine, and um, I think it's good there being a, the the one solution. And you know, I, I want to work with them more in the future, as yeah, from Aqua's perspective. So like yeah. Noticed, I, yeah, I don't I don't you know that doesn't necessarily mean we'll give up their desktop, but I think you know working with them is definitely a direction we're going in. So Thanks. yes, multi site under BLT and Vagrant VM is a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, 
will Lando solve some of those problems, some of those challenges? I think you can in the configuration. I haven't done it, but I'm pretty sure you can. We're, we're a site factory customer. Yeah. And that's been a, a real challenge. And I'd love to. Like, I think we should connect in. Um, yeah, I, I know there's some um, work uh, that's been published already to do 